Letter 36. One must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I received yet another letter from UT, Sister in the Lord, the one of August 25th. I see your devotion to me, the unworthy one, and to our monastery, and I also believe your desire to visit us. But I have to tell you that you are thinking just like the Samaritan woman at the well of Jacob, who was ready to dispute with the Lord regarding the place of worship. Our fathers worshipped in the mountain, read in the John chapter 4. But how did the Lord answer her? Neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. The true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That is what our worship should be like. Let our minds and hearts be directed to this, and believe me, we shall find mercy and eternal life. We are spiritual people, and so our communication should be in spirit, and that is true Christian unity, which unto the ages will not be broken. In Christ Jesus our Lord, as it is chained in the canon, O great and most sacred Pascha, Christ, O wisdom and word and power of God, grant that we may partake of their fully in the unwarning day of thy kingdom. Seek after this, and the peace of God will come to you of itself. As it is now, you seek a place and people. Everything holy is holy, and everything pure is pure. I will not argue, but a monastic's greatest attention should be directed to that which is most needful and most profitable. And what can be more needful and more profitable than the kingdom of heaven. And where is it? Listen to God himself who proclaims, The kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, 21. So attend to yourself. If your patience runs out, do not become discouraged. All the saints walked by this path, and with them I wish that you may abide eternally. Peace to you and God's blessing. Greatly sinful, Hieromonk Anatoly.